All right, you ignorant pigs, listen up. Put down your crack pipes and your beer bongs. It's time for HD's Night at the Movies. This night's offering from Beyond the Pit is Witchfinder General 1968, starring Vincent Price, Ian Ogilvy, Rupert Davies, Wilford Bramble, Hilary Dreyer, and Robert Russell, directed by Michael Reeves, based on the novel by Ronald Bassett couple of things. Michael Reeves was 20 years old at the time of this production. He did not want Vincent Price originally in the role as Matthew Hopkins, the Witchfinder General. He originally wanted Donald Plessitz because he felt that Vincent Price was kind of just a guy who walked his way through every single movie and didn't really put forth a lot of effort. So uh, the first day of filming, Vincent Price falls off of his horse and the director, Michael Reeves, refuses to see him. And he's kind of a dick to him, really bad, like the first week of filming. And then he tries to keep Vincent Price on edge the entire time, just kind of being a dick, hoping that an angered Price would bring out a more fierce witch finder during the performance of this movie. Um... The historical Witchfinder General, a.k.a. Matthew Hopkins, killed some 300 witches uh, during the English Civil War, most of whom were uh, old spinsters who were uh, who didn't have a lot of defenses against such barbaric treatment of the time. And uh, he was never officially given the rank of rich Witchfinder General by Parliament. Anyway, this movie was produced by uh, American International. Hence, uh, the lead role would go to an American actor like Vincent Price and not Donald Plessitz. This is one of three films that Vincent Price would work on in association with Tygon, which was a British company, a lot smaller studio than Hammer, that was going to use American money to market hammer style horror to american audiences and back then you can't do horror movies without vincent price hence vincent price in the lead and they need him to sell it to the americans the film w was released with a different name in the uk under the name of conqueror worm now uh it was also banned for violence in different parts of the United States and in the UK. And there are two versions of this uh, movie out there. There's the edited for TV version, and then there's the director's cut. I own the director's cut, and and uh, the edited for TV version just has a slightly toned down uh, violence. They, I, I believe they don't show the the... The scene where he's beating a woman in a jail cell to get a confession out of her. And uh, there's a uh, love scene that the director of photography failed to see a half nipple on. This movie also makes it into the category of heavy metal movies. Uh, the, joining the ranks of The Black Roses, 1988, Deathgasm, 2015, Friday the 13th, Part 6... 1986 and The Crow 1994. Uh, Friday the 13th Part 6, uh, Alice Cooper was all over that soundtrack and it just rocks the entire time, all the way through. This movie also had several songs written about it. Saxon would do a song called Witchfinder General. Cathedral would have a song called Matthew Hopkins, Witchfinder General. There's a band, a British heavy metal band from the first wave, from the new wave of British heavy metal called Witchfinder General, and they have a song called Witchfinder General. Uh, Overkill would also have a song called Feel the Fire. I am Matthew Hopkins, witch finder.
Did anybody else see that tight-bodied background dancer? I mean, god damn! So uh, as far as like it's, uh, you know, I mean, this is just kind of like a heavy metal movie all the way through because of this soundtrack that it would get later. Of course, Vincent Price being a very popular actor, of course, Hammer being somewhat popular in England at the time. It's only natural that, that, that there would be songs written about it and that it would inspire uh, some heavy metal songs to be uh, to be made. And, you know, before I... Uh, and with all the accolades that this movie already has, I feel that I can actually start. Witchfinder oh, General was the 75th film to have Vincent Price in it. And uh, it was also one of three films that Vincent Price would shoot in the UK that uh, was uh, brought together by Tygon and an Amer American International. All, both of these, all three of these movies had uh, a few things in common. One, they were done by the same companies and they all starred Vincent Price and Hilary Dreyer. The movie starts out with the hanging of a witch at the gallows. She snaps down like a rag doll, then they cut over to a shot of Vincent Price, who's sitting astride the horse, and then you get the title, Matthew Hopkins, Witchfinder General. Or if you're in the UK, Matthew Hopkins, Conqueror Worm. Uh, one of the things I like about this movie is the cinematography. Uh, they did a really good job at making the UK look wide open and have a beautiful countryside, which is really hard to do considering the fact that it's not very wide open and there aren't a lot of wild, wide open spaces that you can use uh, in much the same way John Ford would use uh, for a John Wayne film when you got him riding along the horse and there's this big open wild uh, country that he's riding through. But they did a really good job at making sure there's no telegraph, telephone wire, no rail posts, no, no freeways, nothing. That's just good countryside. And uh, it was kind of shot like a Western. Like uh, most Hammer movies, uh, this movie is also focused on a young power couple. Not to mention you have a, a patriarch, John Lowe's, played by Rupert Davies, who gives the woman away to the young man in much the same way uh, Maria was given away to uh, a Paul in Dracula Has Risen from the Grave. Then you are introduced to Vincent Price, who is Matthew Hopkins, and uh, Robert Russell, who plays John Stern. And they're kind of like a power duel. They go from town to town, accusing witches, torturing witches, burning said witches, and collecting the nine guineas of silver from each town that cooperates with them. So with the cast established, uh, Hopkins and John Stern move into a village after Richard leaves. Hopkins and John move on Sarah's uncle because he, by the, he has been accused of by the village of being a witch. And uh, nobody believes him. Everybody steps back in fear. And being accused of a witch was literally like the cancel culture of its day. Um, you know, to be accused of a witch in the mid-1600s, probably worse because it meant you were going to die. It, but, you know, when I compare it to, like, the hashtag Me Too movement or, uh, you know, a, a woman pointing her finger at a man and saying, J'accuse you of rape, you know, it's very similar, you know. Uh, the verdict is guilty until proven innocent. This person is being accused or canceled is rarely ever helped by his family, friends, lest they get canceled themselves. Once a person is accused of being a witch, that is... Uh, the accused is tortured until they confess and executed. Your friends, kinsmen, and neighbors stand back in fear as people like Matthew Hopkins and John Stern apply their trade. Rup the, Rupert Davies, the character being tortured by Hopkins, is, a, is the catalyst that would basically being, bring Richard on a collision course of revenge against Hopkins and John Stern because Sarah thinking that she can save her uncle sleeps with Matthew Hopkins on more than one occasion and then when Matthew Hopkins goes over to the next village to establish some business over there about witches um, John Stern rapes Sarah Richard finds out about all of this 
and marries her anyway. And he like swears a knight's vow to avenge her chastity. And this is like real blood oath stuff. And, you know, of course, they've already ridden on to the next village and everything. But, um, you know, when he finally catches up with John Stern and everything, he's like, oh, John Stern, uh, I'm the husband of Maria and I'm here to claim the right of a husband. Hits him right in the face with like a, a beer stein, a metal beer stein, and they have a brawl in the bar and Stern is able to get away. And he tells John Hop, uh, Matthew Hopkins about this and he's like, have you forgotten about our power? He could very well be a witch. One cool thing about this movie is the English Civil War is literally running through the entire background of this movie. And uh, the love story between Richard and Sarah is just really, uh, it's really, really well done. And it's 100% believable. It's just, it's it's a good, solid uh plot stone right there you know it's like if you have if you have three pieces of plot that you need that just fits in and it's one piece of the triforce for this plot and um another thing i like about this movie is the grim dark killings in it and uh you know the one that stands out to me most is the uh burning of elizabeth clark and it just shows you what can what 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 man's inhumanity to man is capable of especially during the cancel cultural age or during the witch trials you know richard is able to finally catch up to sarah after he takes her out of the town and then they're both captured by john stern and matthew hopkins and they're taken to a dungeon and then with the help of some troopers uh, jo uh richard is able to escape and uh save his beloved by hacking up matthew hopkins uh in, in uh in brutal fashion you know so uh it, it's important to note that uh Matthew Hopkins in real life died an old man in his bed and nothing ever happened to him. And uh, another thing I'd like to mention about this movie is Michael Reeves was literally 20 years old and uh, he worked on the Oblong Box and did a little bit of editing on The Cry of the Banshee and then he had an unfortunate car accident. But this movie is so well done. If he had lived, he'd be right up there with uh, Coppola or Stanley Kubrick as a director he really had a promising uh he really had an eye for being a director especially having been so young you know that's what he wanted to do with his uh longtime friend ian ogilvy was uh make movies and they would make little super eight films in their backyard anyway let's get to the slayer pit totals we have one half breast that got past the director of photography and the censors we got nine dead bodies gratuitous oliver cromwell musket foo axe hacking one case of swashbuckling guy shot in the back spur to the eye two guys shot in the chest boil lancing one animal house style peek through the window window multiple cases of slapping a bitch sean connery style one fist fight one bump on the head, cavalry cavalcade, one shiv to the back, one case of burning a witch, one drawing of th one one drowning, three hangings. Slayer Pit awards go to Vincent Vincent Price for best actor. Jailer, take them to the trees. Ian Ogilvy, I'm going to kill you. Hopkins and Michael Reeves, the director for doing things the Hammer Horror way. HD gives this five skulls check it out for the month of halloween uh be sure that you own the dvd because it's just one of those movies that you know could be edited at any time you know and you know it just this is one that you have to have in your physical media library i can't stress that enough anyway uh as you know if you want to get in touch with me you can talk to me on instagram if you leave a comment in the comment section i will respond to your comment there if you really want to help me out go over to my rumble page soy free warhammer and subscribe to me over there anyway as you know youtube has many features you can use to interact with me you can like the video dislike the video comment or subscribe but until i see you again keep painting keep playing and stay metal my friends and we'll see you in the next one happy halloween with the tranquility of rural England shattered by civil war, evil was spawned at a time of strife in the land. Take him, Stern. Look for the devil's marks upon him. Run. Right. Albert, you do. Pounding the innocent in violence and terror, this evil man showed no mercy in the pursuit and interrogation of his victims. He was called the Witch Finder General. And amidst the horror of the witch hunt, a story of tender young love. Didn't your uncle just say you must hurry to bed?
He did. And isn't he a wise man? He is. But even their innocence is cruelly corrupted by the vile touch of the Witchfinder General. My motive in coming here was to find the truth. Vincent Price is the Witchfinder General. Lust and greed were his only gods. The money from the magistrate. Nine guineas in silver. Good. Now we can leave. Ian Ogilvy as Richard Marshall. He stood alone against the forces of devilish destruction. And it is in thy sight, O Lord. But I hereby swear I shall not rest from the pursuit of his murderers till they stand before thee, ready to answer to thee for their sins. Rupert Davies as John Lowe's. Master Marshall, welcome. Patrick Weimark as Oliver Cromwell. Amongst the most pleasurable aspects of victory, gentlemen, is the opportunity it affords to reward valor. It ranks almost with good food. And Wilfred Bramble. And uh, what line of business might you be in? God's business, witch finding. Witch finding. Oh, that's nice. That's very nice. And introducing Hilary Dwyer as Sarah. Filmed in authentic detail and photographed with piercing realism against the actual background of peaceful villages and quiet countryside. Never has England looked so beautiful, yet been so violent. I'm your man friend. John Stern, they call me. Man's inhumanity to man portrayed on the screen so vividly that you flinch. So real that you too will fear the witch finder general. Ah! Ah! Be the first to see it. Be the first to talk about it. The witch finder general. I'm more of an expert at uh, exposing the moon. <laughs> I Get out of there! Let's go! <laughs> <laughs> See if you find uh, the one crater. <laughs>